So we got five repeaters programmed in this area. And on this mountaintop, I know for sure I can hit four of them. So four repeaters and we've got no luck. So kind of screwed on the radio side. We have not only a good backup, but uh, which has now become my preferred method. We've got our Starlink Roam or mobile, which I've had for about a year now and using the crap out of it. And it hasn't failed once. The main benefit to this is you can, you can set it up anywhere. There's no real setup. Unlike the radio, there's really no, no limited range. You don't have to type in a whole bunch of numbers, do a whole bunch of buttons. All you got to do is get power to this thing. You can activate your subscription in the middle of nowhere. And in like two minutes, you're on the internet. And again, unlike with the radio, you can talk to exactly who you want to not have to talk to somebody hanging out in a basement somewhere calling people. So I have everything I need in this kit, but one way I power this is we've got our cigarette lighter. Some people call it a DC output and it's got all our USB things, but it also has a 110 plug. So that'll accept the standard Starlink plug that comes with it. Another thing we can do is simply a high powered, high output battery bank. This one is an anchor. It's like a 24,000 milliamp hour uh, power source power bank. And then you look on Amazon and you can just buy a nine foot cable that's designed for Starlink. You see it has the same color as the Starlink cable. And really what you need is this input for the Starlink. And then it's a standard USB-C output. So we can plug that in. So we've got power. You don't really have to angle this a certain way. I just use the stand to get my power bank out of the sun. I typically point it right up at the sky. And that works fine for the most part, straight up. You got a clear sky, you don't have too many trees around you, you'll be fine. So we got that powered up. Let's see how long it takes. I bet my Wi-Fi is already running. It's gonna take longer. Yeah, we're already connected. Wi-Fi Rover. I know that's my mobile one. So there we go. Now we have our signal app. We got text message, whatever you want. I could freaking type a Mayday message out there on YouTube uh, freaking comment section. And <laughs> some of you guys will reach out to me. I've done tests like that where I just say, hey, just want to see who's out there and who will answer and people hit me up pretty quickly all right so i'm not bashing the radio world right ham still has a pretty good freaking standard purpose uh this stuff is pretty expensive it's already gotten cheaper i've seen guys get a year package for 99 dollars with the equipment and then they just need to buy some of the extra power hookups um, i got it new so it was 5.99 and then I will do the $20 a month freaking package, which is like, I don't know, two gigs of data maybe. And that's really all I'm going to use this for. I'm not watching, you know, freaking porn or high def uh, YouTube videos while I'm out. This is just either on the ATV or it's in whatever vehicle I'm out screwing around in. And you see how quick that setup was. We're putting out 20, 21 to 23 watts is what we're putting out, Eight, 18 to 23. So I don't know, do the math on that and 24,000 milliamp hours, like you're sitting pretty. So just cause I know people are gonna say it and ask like, well, you still carry a radio. Yeah, again, I'm not bashing radio. It still has very many uses. Walking around the homestead, out here screwing around, having a good old time. Me, the family and the neighbors uh, are, are primary when we're out doing things is almost always the radio. And it's, you know, and it's UHF, VHF, whichever one we're using. <clears throat> and so, yeah, we always have radios on us. We have extra ones on all the vehicles. So somebody just has, somebody gets in trouble or they forget theirs and they're out. Oh, just look in this freaking box, put it together, put the battery on and there you go. Now you're talking. So yeah, radio still has its uses. I'm not putting out my Starlink or driving around with it in the dash, constantly using signal and stuff. 
when I do road trips, like up and over certain mountains, and I know I'm gonna be out of service for a long time, I have put the Starlink on my dash, so I do have constant phone connectivity. Because if I'm four hours away from somebody out in the mountains, I'm not programming repeaters all across half the country trying to talk like this when we've kind of modernized and it's almost always phone. So I'm driving on my road trips, you know, and I'm checking in, I just pull up my phone, do the voice message real quick. I know it's gonna hit Starlink, hit the space, and do all the stuff out there and come out to whoever's phone I'm talking to. Different uses for different tools, and that doesn't mean we drop one or the other. Uh, we, if you have seen the SEER challenge, we use the Starlink um, almost exclusively with the good guy side, just talking through signal on Starlink. And out here, where you get into any one of these deep gulches, this is dead. You're, you're not talking to anybody. So unless a dude, also with all the RDF um, equipment, the Crocken and stuff, the bad guys were using, this was a no-go. They were not RDFing our freaking signal text messages that we sent out. So again, different tools for different jobs. Mobile emergency comms in a box. Too easy. I'll see ya. The grunt is not crooked. The camera is very crooked.